Hello. I'm sure you didn't expect me to be back so soon. <laughs> uh, I was doing a, a Zoom session with Hilda Stein. She's also got a YouTube channel and she calls it Slow Saturday. And we had a chat over Zoom and I think she will put it on her episode this Saturday. Um, and I will definitely link it below. And we were mostly talking about marling. And that is why I'm again you, um, wearing my Pinguino by Stephen West. Or my, my version of it. Uh, so let me quickly say I'm Adela. And I live in Pretoria in South Africa. And uh, yes, we had a lovely chat. Hilda is also from South Africa. She's a... a prolific designer and uh, I always enjoy talking to her she's easy to talk with and easy to talk to so I enjoyed it and I talked way too much and didn't give her enough time to ask the questions she actually I think she probably planned to ask me but oh well we'll just take it as it is <laughs> Um, yes, so this is my pinguino and I just decided um, or thought that I can wear this because it's also marling. It's the three strands of lace. I did um, definitely talk about it in one of my previous episodes. I will link it uh, or um, just uh, maybe now I'm very lazy with links. But I do give a lot of information in the description below this video. So I will uh, just go and have a look in what episode um, I talked about this or where I wore it and explained a little bit uh, about um, how I knitted mine. Because it's a little bit different from the original design uh, by Stephen West. So what... Um, I thought that while I'm all dressed up and very, very nice and washed and makeup put on, <laughs> I can just as well quickly do a short episode. So I think what I will do is just show you one or two um, finished objects and then maybe the next episode doesn't have to be that long. So the first uh, finished object is the emeline cowl that I was busy with, still busy with in the previous episode. It's all done and the kitchen stitch is done. So this is the inside. So as I explained last time, the, the color work is on the inside as well. But I thought that if I made the inside more of a single layer, then it will be a little bit more practical for our South African climate. And um, I also did a shorter repeat of this part of the color work pattern. So, and then, yeah, I kitchen stitch it together. So it's all ready now and wearable and very cozy and very soft. It's done in Merino singles. The one is from Miss Lamotte and the other one from Indibel Fibers. I wrongly said that it was from Wishbone, the charcoal color, but it's from Indibel Fibers who unfortunately doesn't die at the moment. So this is the Emeline Cow and it's by Sari Northland. I'm very happy that it is done and that it is a finished object. It was um, it was a work for a quite a long time. And then um, I did say that August will all be will be all about uh, whip busting but uh, another small project jumped onto my needles when I was at the 
little breakaway that uh, I was uh, going to when I when I spoke to you last time. A yarn shop from Johannesburg, the yarn tree, the ladies from the yarn tree was also there and we had great, great time. Lots of laughing and chatting and knitting and crocheting and looking at yarns, all the yarns they had. And they asked me if I was willing to give a colour work class at their shop in on the 17th of September. So um, I chose two yarns. I bought two yarns from the shop to quickly make a new sample of this easy colour work cowl. Uh, here's my little label from that uh, Lindsay from Naughty Habit made, or made, got made for me. I think it's because I'm on selfie mode again, it's the wrong way around. Um, this was knitted out of the Peter's Plum. The plum colour is Peter's Plum by Karua Moon. And this beautiful, beautiful variegated speckled colour is by Cowgirl Blues and it's called Madonna. And I think it's very appropriate. So I used 4.5 millimetre needles and then after this ribbing I went to a 4 millimetre. But um, yes, as I will say in my colour work class, that I, it all depends on your gauge and how tight your colour work is. So I just want to show you, um, it actually forms a pattern on the inside as well. And that pattern is just formed by the floats. So this is a DK, I would all actually say it's almost a light worsted. It's the same weight as the one of a kind four ply DK that I uh, showed you previously that I um, use quite a lot that I used for my mandala and for the scarf that I wove. It's a very nice base, very nice. Love it, love it, love it. So yes, I'm, I will. Um, I still have to write down the the pattern, and then uh, I will present it at the yarn tree on the seventeenth of September. So that is the one project that jumped on and off my needle since I last spoke to you, <laughs> and then. Oh, I think I must, no, I will show that to you lot next time, I think. I think I will show that to you next time. Um, oh, and the other thing that's done is the, the bed socks that I showed you. This is actually also done in the same four-ply DK light worsted base. And this is from uh, one of a kind yarns. Uh, this is one skein, as you can see. Uh, the one is a little bit lighter than the other one. This was the first sock. And this is the second sock. But it's only bed socks and it's only socks. Even if it was socks that I would wear, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, I just want to quickly show you um, the pattern itself. As I said, I used the stitch count for the rice socks by Tin Can Knits, and it works out. I think the size is perfect. I used the medium, started with 44 stitches, one by one ribbing, and then, as my usual, after the ribbing, I turn it inside out and I uh, knit uh, so 
this was when I was knitting the one by one ribbing this was the inside so I turned it inside out and then knitted 10 rows for the rib and 20 rows for the leg and then I did the diamond U by um, Laura Salisbury I will again write it down in the description below so you do some increases like you would do for a it's a variation on a strong mule but the increases is done in a diamond form and then you have a small heel turn like you would have for a heel flap and gusset sock and then you have the other decreases below the foot and it's very comfortable and uh, well I had to because the the diamond deal sock pattern is written for fingering weight yarn so I had to do some mats to um, transfer it to this 44 stitch um, sock um, so I will definitely try it again on 64 stitch sock but it's very comfortable I've got an eye instep so um, it works well for a high instep I'm happy with it with how it fits and then I just did uh, normal decreases I like to uh, swap my knit two together and SSK so we would usually do the um, SSK I would do a knit two together and we would normally do the uh, knit two together I would do an SSK and yes that is now a pair of bed socks which I would probably only wear next winter because it's almost spring here in South Africa <laughs> but in any case um, I used a 3.25 uh, 80 centimeter needles um, the Addy lace tips I think I said last time as well yes so it's not the most comfortable knit for me to knit at um, this uh, heavy weight yarn on a tight gauge but um, yes they are done and I will give my hands a rest and maybe do another pair uh, later in the year or even next year so that I have two pairs of bed socks ready for the winter so that is that and then what else um, yes I wanted well, I'm, I'm still working vigorously on my lavage and the body that is in one color is um, no, it's, it's a slow knit <laughs> I'm almost, almost ready to start the bottom ribbing. So this um, plain color knitting is done in John Alban Yarn Adelic that I bought from Colors of Amalfi and the colorway is called Ordinary Joe. And I'm using for um, on this I'm knitting with three millimeter chia goose so that is then, then uh, it's only the sleeves I have to add this piece of color work to the sleeves as well So we will see how that will go but I will definitely not be finished by the end of August uh, if if the body is finished by the end of August I will be happy I will be really really happy and then the sleeves will get done just um, yeah in between other projects because I'm already dreaming of some summer tops knitting some summer tops so that is the lavage. 
Um, so I think that is all that I want to show you today. And I did forget again last time. I wanted to show you the Marie Wallen books that I'm so privileged to own. I've got two. I've got Gentle and Cherish. So this is all dream knitting for me. I'm slowly acquiring some John Auburn yarns to use for some of the patterns in this book. And one of the, uh, let me see if I can find it quickly. Um, of course, I didn't prepare or mark anything. <laughs> That's just, just how it goes. Just want to see if I can find them. Oh, I wanted to say that um, this is uh, um, the Lupin socks and I used this very last um, color work before the toes is um, the um, one chart that I used for the lavage. Of course, I did say in my last episode I didn't do the last chart of the lavage itself, of the pattern itself. I used one of the charge, uh, charts uh, from the Psychomore wrist warmers that I got the kit from and then I was looking for just a small little chart to use some of the greens that I still had and I looked and looked through the book and then I saw that that little last little color work chart on the socks um, will work perfectly so yes that worked out great I just want to see if I can find one or two of I think they both may be that I think they're both in cherish. Oh yes, this is the one um cardigan beta beta. And for this I've got yarn. I bought Rowan felt a tweet at Arthur Bales at their sale. Uh, I decided that maybe um, that is a good uh, cardigan uh, intro into her color work cardigans because a lot of her cardigans are really all over color work. Let me just see if I can find one. Um, for example, this one. This is called Rosalie. So um, I think before I start something like this, I should probably start with something with um, uh, some rest rows in between. <laughs> and um, I also thought that it might be ideal because I do like, um, as you know, I do like to um, convert all my cardigans and sweaters with an A-line. So I thought that the rest rows that is in between uh, will give me the opportunity to work out how, how I'm going to do that um, A-line shaping for the cardigans. Uh, and then one of the other, there's the other design in here that is uh, the same, not the same, but uh, it looks more or less like the lavage. So this is called Dana. And I've got yarn for that as well, but I'm not really sure when I will be able to do this one because but it's so beautiful everything takes quite a while to knit <laughs> and because I'm not a monogamous knitter it takes even longer but yes I just thought that I would like to show you these two books and um, yeah it's just it's beautiful books and uh, Georgia the model that she uses for all her designs.
from the very beginning. She's beautiful and um, you know, it's just lovely to have the books. Uh, you, uh, when you buy the books, it took a while to come to arrive in South Africa because we were waiting for someone to bring it in their luggage. And they came separately in different person's luggage. Uh, just to save on the postage that would have been the shipping would have been uh, made the price almost double so um, yes we waited a while but just to have these books in my hands is the most amazing feeling really I can't explain it <laughs> but yes I'm, I'm happy to have them and to own these books and to just um, page through them and admire all the designs and beautiful beautiful designs in both of these books with quite a few that I would love to knit in the next 10 to 20 years <laughs> but I think that is all that I wanted to share with you today and um, yeah I just thought that while I was all dressed up in my in my eyes I'm dressed up uh, I can quickly make a short episode and say that I'm well and I'm a bit more relaxed I'm surrounded by cameras and beams and alarm eyes <laughs> now and um, I don't have a sinus infection anymore so um, everything is better Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all, all the uh, kind comments always on my episodes. I'm really, really looking forward to the day that I will have 500 subscribers. That will make me really happy and I'm already thinking of prizes that um, I would like to um, give away to celebrate my 500 subs subscribers. I hope. I really hope I can get there. It will. I, I'm, it makes me so happy if I see this um, a few more subscribers to my channel. So, um, if you know of anybody that would um, enjoy my episodes, please um, refer them to my channel. I will, that will make me very happy. Thank you so much for watching, and I would. I would like to see you sooner than later. Goodbye.